Hello, and welcome along to the stream tonight. Hopefully, everything is working as expected. Still can't hear me. That's confusing. Oh, now you can hear me. Okay, cool. That's good. <laughs> Why can't I hear myself? Oh, because I'm muted. Hold on. Uh, there we go. Okay, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> we're back. Um, okay, so welcome along to the stream tonight. Uh, the plan for tonight. Hello, Jericho. Long time no talk. How are you today, sir? Font on VS is a bit small. Okay, hold on. Um, oh, yeah, that was me. That was me. I should have bumped that up. I will fix that just now, Maurice. Is that better? So the plan for tonight, uh, for those of you just joining the chat, is we're going to be looking at Chocolate Gooey, and we are going to be building on, hopefully, some of the work that uh, Jan has been doing for us uh, off stream. So he's 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 absolutely on fire at the minute. Let's let's just be honest. Uh, uh, Jericho, doing great. Thanks for asking. I hope everyone's yes, uh, everyone happy and healthy. Uh, this side of the pond. I uh, hope it's the same with you. Um, we are still in lockdown over here in the UK. Uh, Self-isolating or at least minimal minimal uh, outings to shops and things like that. So just try to keep safe and out of the reach of COVID. Uh, but where I wanted to start tonight was a review of what Jan's been working on and to try and get it to work. Uh, and by that, I mean exercise it such that uh, we actually get more than one result in the the window. So let me let me show you what I'm talking about. So first of all, let's have a look at what Jan has been doing. So Jan is uh, Punker76 on Twitter. Uh, he's not intending on being on the stream tonight unless I shout for him. So if I get completely stuck, which is, let's be honest, there is a strong chance that I will get stuck on something, then he's going to be around. But he's working on some Matt app stuff tonight. So he won't be joining the stream unless called on. So let's wait and see how that goes. But what he has been working on is this thing called the uh, advanced dialogue. So I'm just going to play through that breakpoint. But what he's been working on is tidying up what I was working on. So he's now made it so that uh, rather than being a default expander, this thing is now essentially a radio button. Uh, so it only allows you to click one thing at a time. And he's styled it in such a way that it now looks like an expander. So hats off to him. But now you'll only ever see one section at a time, uh, which was one of the requests that I think Manfred put into the issue that we've got going on over in GitHub. So uh, we're now seeing the um, kind of the default options that we think are needed when we're doing an advanced install of a package with Chocolate GUI. Uh, if you want to dig into some of the more advanced options, you've certainly got that option. Um, but these are the ones at the top here that we think are the ones that are most applicable. The other thing that I worked on was that all of these things, all of these labels, these are now, now all localized. So they will, once the the merge of this PR goes into the develop branch that'll kick off a uh, uh, release to TransFX. And for those of you who are helping out with the translation of Chocolate GUI into other languages, that will uh, absolutely start happening. So once those resource files goes up to TransFX, you'll be prompted, I think, to uh, provide some localized versions of these labels. What I also added was it's the some tooltips. So these tooltips provide the default information that you get from the chocolate help command. So it provides some information about uh, what's expected to go into each of these blocks. Now, the other thing that Jan worked on, which you won't have seen, is 
there's now when it's fetching the package versions for a package it comes up with a little loading icon now and that loading icon will be there while it's populating the uh, combo box here now what i want to be able to do is exercise that to see if it's actually working so i got that working last time by updating to a newer version of the chocolate lib the problem with that was that that version of chocolate lib was an unofficial version which meant that it didn't work very well but what we should have now is a official non-official build so if i install this one we should have an official non-official build which means that it should work but it means we don't have to uh, mess around with some of the code to get it to work it should just work right so let's see if we can exercise this a little bit and get the package versions to show in that install dialog so if we run this again what are we going to get this time and if we get that working then the next thing i want to look at is passing in the paged the number of package versions that we want to populate initially i want to take a look at doing that rather than loading them all up we want to load a subsection of just the um the most recent i think we decided 20 was going to be the default so let's see if we can bring that up so let's just go back to yeah so marisa is confirming that we decided it was 20 was the default so actually what I have got, I don't think we discussed this on the stream last week, but once this loads up, if I go into the settings here, then I have added that as a default configuration. So we've now got a number of package versions for selection configuration property, and that has a default value of 20. So we can use that uh, and pass it into the the command that goes off and fetches all the available package versions. So if we double click on this and click on install advanced. Oh, it's got 43, look. Right, so let's take that breakpoint off. And Kim's just joined the chat. Hello, Kim, how are you doing, sir? So if we go back to this and say cancel, and if we click on install advanced, so we've got them all there. We have to. There's still a sorting issue. We need to. We need to work on the sorting. But is it just my end that the screen has freezed? Um. I don't know. Anyone else in the chat room having issues with the stream freezing? I hope not. Let's do this. I have that as well. It's doing funky. It's going funky this night. So I hope that's not on my end. It would be good to, hmm, the fact that it's two of you as well, that's a little concerning. I mean, I'm still doing the whole on a single machine. Oh, it's not freezing for Jericho. So, okay. <laughs> two out of one, two, uh, two out of three. Um, I'm not getting any visual indications in OBS on my machine saying that it's struggling because like i say as a couple of streams ago we um i went through the the long-winded story of how i'm now using a single machine for doing the streaming as opposed to um a windows machine and another machine but i'm not getting any visual clues to say that that is struggling on my machine so i hope it's not this end See, that's still really quick. So hmm, let's try and break it. Uh, Firefox Nightly, is that the one that we're going to, or VLC Nightly? Let's see if we can break it. Uh, Kim is now saying, just reloaded and I've got moving pictures now. Okay, cool. So if we, if we go into this one and we click install advanced ah there we go right so now this is what jan has given us jan's giving us this little loading icon 
and that will spin until it's gone off to the server. It's found all the available package versions and it will come back with the results and tooltips. Yes, I added tooltips for everything. I did. Uh, so I was just saying, Kim, that um, in this version, I've went through and I've localized all of these labels. I've added tooltips. So if and when we merge this into um, uh, the develop branch, those will go off to TransFX and they will then be ready for um, people to uh, localize into different languages. So um, I'm looking at you <laughs> to do at least one of those. Uh, No, that was, uh, Jan left that for me to do. So I'm quite happy to pick up things like that when he's working all this magic with other stuff. I'm happy to do the, the tooltips and the localization stuff. But I don't know if you've seen it uh, running, but um, now if I expand this, so this is now a, a radio button. This, is, this thing here is now essentially a, a radio button that is styled to look like an expander. So you'll only ever see one of them at a time. And I think it looks really good. So... And yes, Dutch, uh, Maurice, absolutely. Uh, if you could do that one, that would be great as well. So the first thing I wanted to do, now that we can break this, I think we need to not break it. So I do now have a setting over here, which is for the default number of packages, to sh package versions to show uh, when we are searching for them. So we should go and implement that. So if we go into here, we need to do some stuff here. So I'm going to say I want to do an int, which is the page, and an int, which is the page uh, size. And I'm going to pass those along to the list command. So I'm going to do config.listcommand.page is equal to page. And I'm going to do config dot list command dot page size. By the way, didn't my apps have a style tooltip? Mm, maybe. Could be. Uh, my apps tooltip. Tooltip. Let's try that again. Mm. I mean, the, there might be one. I maybe have to speak to Jan. Uh, they may have a. There may be a built in style for it as opposed to an actual control. Uh, where would I find that? Oh, he's in the chat. Oh, so he is. <laughs> but he's uh, Jan is busy this evening. He's doing. Uh, he's working on my apps. So um, I wasn't going to bring him in unless it was a a dire need for Jan's assistance. For now, I think I can get by. Maybe. <laughs> so for this, I'm now passing in a page and a page size to the list command. So we will. We should be able to control the. Uh, number of package versions that comes back in that list command. So rather than having everything, we should just get the top 20. So if I go to where this thing was being called from, which is going to be in here, then I want to do some stuff. So in here, now Tooltip style is automatically up. So I think that means we're good. I th uh, Jan's just come back in the chat room now. Right. So at this point in time, when we are showing the custom dialogue for the first time, we want to. Hmm, we may have to play with this a little bit but what i'm going to do is i'm going to hard code this to be the first page first page of results and then this thing here 
then wants to be config service dot get config value i think chocolate gooey, gooey let's remind myself about i should switch that off i'm going to mute myself a second hold on i'm going to put alexa off I've put Alexa off, so we won't get that again. Um, so if I look over here and I look at here, then it's this thing that we want. And then I'll come back to the comments in the chat room. So this here is going to be number. There we go. Dun, dun, dun. What are you complaining about? No overload. Oh, because I have to change it in the uh, interface. So if we go over here and then go over here. Then this wants an additional int that is the page and then an int that is the page size. That should make things work. Okay. Um, make sure. <laughs> That's quite funny what it is. I'll give you that one. I think perhaps I'm wrong. The thing I was thinking of seems to be something that is available in the Windows ribbon. To okay, cool. Um, so if we do this, Um, hmm. that's going to fail. If we go back to where we're doing that, then yeah, we were doing stuff like this. So let's go back to where we were, which was in here. So we'll do some work here to pull this out. Uh, number of package versions. Number of package. Hello, Frank. How are you today, sir? Then uh, we'll do this. And then this is a setting. So let's put this as the setting. Take that, put that in here. Then we'll grab this, put that in there, grab this, and put it in there, and grab the setting and put it in there. And then all of that being equal, we should then be able to do that. Okay, the UI, it, it's coming along, it's coming along. So over the week, uh, Jan uh, Punker76 on Twitter basically did a bunch of work again. <laughs> uh, um, and he's added in some functionality that uh, improves the UI a little bit again. So baby steps, but we're getting there. So what we've got now is... If we go over to a package that we want to install, we'll use the VLC nightly package again as a one that we know has a lot of packages, package versions in it. And this time around, we should only get 20 of them returned. So if I double click on this and I click on install advanced, then It has got them. However, something didn't work there. So 
Interesting. No, I think there's something else going on here. So if we look at this, the most recent package version, or need, doesn't need to be page zero. Mm, let's, let's come back to that. So I think there was, there was 20 packages in it, but it hasn't selected, it hasn't set the selected version as the most recent one. Now that's because it's not in the list. So it could be caching, but let's, let's do some digging. So what we're trying to do here is choco list. Uh, what's the package ID? The package ID is hidden VLC hyphen nightly package list VLC hyphen nightly exact. I'll get there in the end exact all versions. And we're going to say page one, which is what we're doing just now. We're going to do page size equals 20. See what that comes back with. Okay. It could be cached, Jan, but I'm wondering if this is a zero index. Mm. What's going on there then? Could we do. So hold on, looks like Marisa is saying something. You need sorted in descending order. Okay. Choco list. What have we got? What can we pass back to it? Order by popularity. ID starts with exact page size. Version all. ID only. Proxy. No progress. No op. Uh, I'm not seeing anything that would give me what I want here. Hello, a deal. Welcome along. So hold on, what are we saying? Chocolate list dash H select string order. Only order by popularity. Okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying, Maurice. Um Well that's ever so slightly annoying. Because I mean, we can do all versions, but uh, oh, that's we might have to go back to the drawing board on that one then. Can you? Can I? Can you say no? Um, sure. What would you like to say no to? Or... <laughs> so... What do we do then? Well, agreed. I mean, it, that sort of defies... So if we... Hmm, that sort of defeats the purpose of having 
it sort of defeats the purpose of having the result res hmm, sort of defeats the purpose of um the the thing <laughs> what I'm trying to say um yeah, it defeats the point of having the setting, which is to control the number of package versions. Because if we need to fetch them all to then restrict what we're showing in the drop down list, it, the thing in which. <laughs> um, indeed. So, is there anything extra on the search command that just isn't exposed on the list command? Table detail. Download ID by ID only. No, there's not. Mm. I am going to have to speak to a certain someone about about that because without knowing how many versions there are, I can't even force it to give me the last page so okay how do we control the order of package versions hmm That's that's gonna it's gonna annoy me a little bit. From the chocolatey gooey perspective, I why is that not got anything in it anymore? What did we do? Oh, that's probably gonna be a deal. That's playing with that, Kim. I also got notifications. <laughs> and based on the response, I'm going to go that it was him that's uh, playing with that. Um, so Maurice, how is that different from what I was trying? But I'm willing to... Oh, I see what you're saying. To see whether it gives a different result. ELC nightly... I, I don't think it will, but let's give it a try. ELC nightly exact all versions page one page size oh, equals 20. Oh, page. There is a minus one in there. Mm, page minus one? Huh. I'm so. Hmm. It maybe defaults to zero if you give it a number less than one, is my guess. In the same way that if I do up to page 100, that shouldn't give me anything, should it? Or it'll give me the highest one. Yeah, so no zero. I should bring up that choco shortcut that Adela just put in there. So choco dot co slash C four B videos. So I believe what this is going to take us to is a playlist playlist of our very own Adele with a series of introduction videos for various aspects of uh, Chocolate for Business. So I won't play all of it, but I'll encourage you all to go and have a look. There he is. Look at that. That is our friend Adil, who is introducing Chocolate for Business. Uh, I've watched all of these videos. Uh, they're very good. I would thoroughly recommend that you all go and check them out. And the animation, yes, it's absolutely amazing. Let's let's play the animation again, shall we? It is. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's the the architecting of chocolatey and how it all comes together. And then boom. Look at that. It's very clever. I like it a lot. 
Um, so yeah, I encourage you to go and uh, check those out and uh, provide any feedback that you might have on those. I think they're now linked from the uh, chocolate.org. Is that right, Adil? Or is this uh, just the playlist? They are. So let's go over there and have a look then. So chocolate.org. And where can I find those under solutions? Or where did it end up? There is a new C4B subsite. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did hear about this. So if I go C4B. There we go. So this is the new chocolate for business section of the website. And then further down at the bottom here, we've got the different aspects of uh, chocolate for business, some of which have videos associated with them. And that's links off to the playlist that uh, we just showed you before. So CCM being the one that I care about because it's the one I'm working on just now. But yeah, there's lots of new things in there to have a look at. So definitely go and check that out. Got to go to resources. Resources on this page. You can get it from the menus as well. Um, up top, I'm looking. Learn. I'm trying to read at the same time. Yes, there's a C4B subtype. You can also get it from the menus as well as resources. So resource library. That's what I'm looking for. Learn resource library. And then ooh, look at that. Chocolate for business feature video series which will take us down into here. Oh, look at that. It's linked to various places, which could have been navigated from product. I think it's meant to be chocolate for business. Yeah, it's right there. There we go. So it's all, it all, it all comes together. So yeah, definitely go and check it out and um, let us know if you have any feedback on anything in there. So getting back to chocolate gooey. So there's a couple of things happening here. We're not getting any package versions anymore. So what did I break? Because that should have come back. Oh, strangeness. So the first thing that from our side, I'm right in saying that we would want this to be sorted newest at the top downwards. Is that correct? So when I expand this, it should be 308, 307, 306. Yes, that's what I thought too. Okay, so let's, at the very least, let's put that in play at our side, the chocolate gooey side, and then I'll need to speak to a certain person whose name rhymes with Bob and see what his thoughts are on that. So, so where were we? This was the get outdated packages. It was this one. So here we are. I thought it was bore. <laughs> um, so we're selecting those. What the semantic version? This is something I was wanting to look up actually. What does semantic version have on it? What does that class have on it? Public semantic version. Does it know? Oh, it's the special version. It's a special version, isn't it? That indicates that it is a pre-release, if I remember correctly. I think we do something with that special version. Yes. So we have on the package, we have a pre-release, is pre-release property that is tied directly to whether or not the special version has anything in it. So we'll have to remember that, I think, when we come to do the next part. 
Um, let's just see what happens when we do a dot order by here. And we say package dot version. Mm. No, that won't work. Mm. But that won't work either, will it? Mm. Let's give that a try. We might want to order by the list. Mm. Let's just see what happens here. <laughs> I just saw a deals comment. Bobbert, indeed. Yes, no, I have to sing Kim's comment as well. It absolutely should be 4.0, but yeah. Um, but it's not. So none of these are actually going to... That looks right to me, I think. But what I don't know is whether it's accounting for... Because that's just a straight .NET version, I think, which might not account for the semantic properties so i think what we want to do is take this out of here and once we have it here can i do that yeah oh interesting Oh, it didn't work. No overload for order by descending. Oh, what do you want? Order by P P dot. Try that then. Didn't like that. <laughs> An order. Well, that's maybe a good idea, uh, Maurice. We, we, yeah, we should be able to do that. Or did I have that right? Was that actually doing what I wanted it to do? Dot order by descending of, oh no, it is. That is what I wanted to do. So p dot version. Yes, okay, sorry. I'm back on track now. Okay, so that is what I want to do. So what you're suggesting there, uh, Maurice, I think it's Maurice, yes it is. So in, yeah, um, I can find it. Then, oh, there's gonna be a few pieces, and it's here. You're suggesting 25 and 25, which makes sense to me. Okay. Mm, I'm still thinking about this package version ordering and how it's not we want
while I'm thinking about a few things, can one of you think of a... Well, that one worked as well. Is that only got 20 things in it? No. Why did that one work? The question I was going to ask was, can any of you think of a package that has uh, pre-release versions in the same package? So what I want to be able to do is I want to put a little tick box here that says include pre-release to then control whether or not we allow or we include pre-release packages in what we ask for. So can anyone think of a package that has pre-release versions in amongst the most recent kind of package versions to see if we can test that out as well? Because what we should be able to do I was struggling to think of one off the top of my head slash packages mm. Even if it doesn't have to be a recent one, I'm thinking if we released anything in here, I think we might have. Version history, show additional, no we haven't. Um, ooh, there's one that might have it. Let's get version dot portable, isn't it? Get version dot portable. Five two four version history. Ah, you see this one might because they tend to push a lot of things. Okay, so let's do let's use this one. So get version dot portable. So what we want to do is okay. Right, no one tell Jan. But I'm going to go and mess around with his YAML. Don't nobody tell him. It'll be a nice surprise for him. Right? Be a nice surprise. It's like, poo. Um, so over here, I'm going to add a checkbox. If we go over here and we look at our dialogues and this one. Then, where are we at? He added a bunch of resources. Then, available versions combo box. Just a reminder, we should pass the chocolate service to the constructor of the advanced. I had the same thought, Jan. I did. I saw what you did. And, yeah, we need to call it multiple times. So I, did the, I had the same thought. Um, we could maybe we'll, we could attempt that refactoring here, um, but what I do want to do is oh, this, you added a grid as well, so that's good. So does that mean I can stick something? Can I just let's just see, let's just see if I what happens if I put a checkbox in here? What's the worst thing that could happen? Checkbox. Let's see what it does. It added it there, look. So I want to put that over here. So I'm going to perhaps, is that progress ring? Is that using absolute positioning? So that's 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 where I was going. Um, so if I go in here and I add grid column definitions and I say column definition, add columns to the grid and the checkbox to the second one. Yep. So column definition, stick that in there, stick that in there. 
and we'll put grid dot column two. Oh, it's coming together. Need a little bit of pad in there. That's fine. Uh, so checkbox uh, text content uh, include pre release why is that not second column to auto uh, it's the width auto two definitions did I oh apologies Is that not? Is it? What's the property I'm looking for? I thought it was content for the text. Content. It's not text though. Mm. No. Thought I knew this <laughs> content checkbox name margin yeah content so why then is that not showing up here maybe checkbox don't have a specified property for that oh, no I think it is. Maybe hot reload bug. Okay, let's let's try that. Let's give it a try. If in doubt, start it again. And if we get that, oh, and then we definitely do need to pass that through because then that's a property of the view model that we would need to, yeah. So we will have to do that refactoring that Jan mentioned. So let's, let's we'll get it, we're getting there. Uh, it's back to here and here. It seems like it's got the space for it, but is it a color thing? Like the foreground color or the... That's a little strange. It does. Where's the thing that takes me to the... In this. What's the font? Font family. Color. Well, that's foreground is. I'm not very good with. Is one of those white? <laughs> I think one of those is white, isn't it? Foreground. Black. Oh, hold on. There we go. So something elsewhere is making that the background is pure white. Yeah, but why is the 
foreground of that checkbox white doesn't matter okay so it's it's not important we can figure that out later we figured out what it was so for now we've got some text and if i tick on this i want to and uh, let's just do a very quick margin equals five watch me guess there we go beautiful oh but that that tool tip is associated with the whole thing mm, i have to come back to that it's because the default checkbox style in okay mm, hold on what is what's maurice sending me Maurice has brought something up, so let's go over here. I'm using all the wrong keyboard shortcuts. Bring this up. List property order by popularity. So if we're not ordering by popularity, then we order by descending. Then is that the only time we're doing order by here? Yeah, no, there's other there's other things going on though. If configuration all versions What makes you think that that's ordered by descending on the download count then by the ID? Oh, if not, it's then results. Results is. But we would have come in here, though. We don't actually get down into here because we're in this one. So if configuration dot all versions, which we're asking for, then we either come in here or we come in here. But both are doing then bias descending, which is what we want, isn't it? I wonder if it's the page size that is causing us problems. Page size. If it has a value, take off those ones and put them in the results. Then, oh, you see that's, no. So if it has a configuration of page.hasValue, which it will have, it goes into results and it skips the page size and the page to give this just the results that are in there. Then, we're not doing that. We're not doing that, we're not doing that, we're not doing that, we're not doing that. Then if it says all versions or we're not selecting a specific version, then we should be ordering by descending. And we should be returning those results. We maybe have we might have to debug into some we may have to debug into some chocolate code at some point to see what's going on. Not for today though. Not for today. Um set our property foreground. I feel Jan's telling me to put that somewhere. But 
I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure what to do with it <laughs> or where to put it. But let's, that's there. Okay, so let's do a couple of things. Back to because it's not showing oh i see i think oh so that's what it's currently set to on the default style so overriding it here is what's required you can use this or as in here Is that a, would that be a, is that a static resource or is that just the name? Can I literally just put that in with dynamic resource? Okay. So in here, dynamic resource with my apps dot brushes dot text. Or is that literally, let's maybe just. Which part of this doesn't like it? I'm doing this all wrong. I know I am. Dynamic resource. I always have to refer to an example. Don't tell me there aren't any, because I know that there are. Dynamic. I'm going to spell resource properly. There we go. Isn't that what I did? Value equals dynamic resource. Did I spell it wrong as well? Bet I did. It's on the same. What? Oh, I did it wrong. Oh, hold on. I'm doing the wrong. No. It's a... I'm so confused. <laughs> Dynamic resource. Come on. My apps dot no. What am I doing wrong? You know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave it the way it was. And we'll come back to it. Cause for now, what I wanna do is I wanna look at our package view model where we had been passing in so all of this i think wants to come out and then in here we're just going to pass the entire chocolate service in that's well, going to break a bunch of stuff over here and what I want to do instead, private read only, I chocolate service, chocolate service, that we are going to include. Mm. 
this thing is in my clipboard. This thing I'm going to put there. My chocolate service. Chocolate service. And then one of the first things we're going to do here is say chocolate service equals chocolate service. Didn't put an underscore up there. Okay. And then what we were doing was Can I just do this now? Chocolate service dot get available packages for ID async. And here we're going to put in package ID, package ID, we're going to put in the int that is the page and that is the page size. We'll pass those through from the configuration. Page and page size. Okay. Don't necessarily fully like how that works yet, but we'll come back to it. It's a start of the refactoring. If we go to definition on this, then what we will also want to include is a bool that is the include pre-release and then this is going to have config dot pre-release is equal to include pre-release right Um, let's go back. Kim saying something. So line 66. Results package repository where return you could be right but if we don't include exact um, okay well let's do this then let's go back and do a test chocolate list exact by id only That's still not giving me, and that's a little strange as well that it's got a four in there. That's a little strange. That's giving me other numbers, but now it's not sorted how I would expect them to be sorted at all. There's definitely some strangeness going on here. It's not even just unsorted, it's... It's inter intermingled? 
That's a little strange. Oh, maybe. Well, let's have a look at... Oh, I don't have it here, do I? Where's that file? Source. Chocolatey. Infrastructure app. And you get... You get list. If it's exact, then fine. Lower ID starts with approved only download cache available. We should still come into here though. We've got all versions, so this okay, no worries. Okay, there have been some changes in this area. I may have to, like I said, we may have to dig into some source code and try and figure out what's going on there. This isn't what I would expect it to be, but we'll come back to it. So for now, I've included that pre-release, but what I'll need to do is I will need to include that um, view model into here. So let's grab one of these. And we'll make this a bool and we'll say include pre release. Copy that and here and say private bool include pre release. Copy that and say this one and this one. Nope, that's not what I want to do. This one. All right. Include pre release so that is going to be bound in our YAML to here is checked is equal to binding include pre release. But that means we can't do this task in the constructor anymore. Or if we do, it needs to run off and okay. So we're saying that this is okay to be done. Oh, I see, mm, I see what you're saying. So can I then oh, hold on? I'll need to do this bool include pre release. That should then I can do this here. I don't know. But what we do want to do though is when I want a private method, I think. And I want to say, Jan sent me something. I should go and look at it. See, he's, he's, he's one step ahead of me. That's in fact, well, no. Let's let's be honest. He's he's more than one step. He's like at, at least fifty. Um, let's borrow this, and I'll bring it over. So, in here, let's remove this and put this in. I've lost some stuff. I've lost. I've lost my setter. 
set and then here style cops shouting at me so this one You define that task. So how do I do that? Because I just kind of stuck this in. So for now, I'm just going to put this in as well. And now we no longer have those. So I'm going to have to set those as properties. So let's, well not properties, let's keep them as private string. package ID and hmm. no where are you set selected version why do I need to pass that I don't oh it's the page sorry that's what I'm looking at private int page private int page size so over here we're going to say page equals page page size equals page size and I missed one which was the package ID equals the package ID so that means, and then for consistency, let's put all of these as the backing member. And then this one, this one, this one. Available version task is the new task mm. oh i remember so i then passed in where did i put it what order did i put them in i said the package id then the version page so we want id the version then we want the page sizes See that? That's the initial one, so that's fine. And then number of packages for selection is that one. Same as the combo box. Let me come back to that, but I think I know what you're talking about, Jan. Uh, Jan's saying that we can disable the checkbox when the task is running, similar to how the combo box is disabled. So let's come back to that. Because that sounds like a good idea to me. But let's stick a breakpoint in our setter and see what happens when we get over here. So the one that we were going to play with was the git version dot portable. So if we search in here for git version dot portable, time is it? Quarter past nine. We're doing okay. We're doing okay. So if we drill into this one, git version dot portable, if we say install advanced. And then it runs off and it gets some stuff. Uh, why is it? Are we running the wrong way? Something didn't quite work there. Okay, 
available versions is. Do I need to await that or with cancellation? Is completed, is faulted. Maybe we need a new cancellation. You're referring to this thing here. Maybe we need. Okay, I'm going to let you play with that. I'm going to try and figure out if I've done this wrong. If I cancel this and we come back into it, then we have some stuff here. But if we go back to here, And we do get version dot portable. Hmm. That's not necessarily doing what I expected it to do either. Because these are pre-released, right? So why... Why is that giving me... Pre-release... Don't want to have... Mm. Execute package search. Whether or not a package is remote determines two things. Does the repository have the notion of listed? Does it support pre-release in a straightforward way? Choco previously dealt with this by taking the path of least resistance and manually filtering out all of the unwanted packages. This result this resulted in a blocking operations that didn't let service-based operations like OData take care of heavy lifting on the server. So we've got a bool then, is it service-based? But this result here should take into consideration whether or not the pre-release is included in the search. And that is what we're setting. That's another question for Roberto. Why is the release not being respected in search or package versions? Uh, so let me catch up here, Jan, because I was off thinking about something else. So um, the cancellation token here needs to, or we can't use the same one. So this one 
here we need a new one here is that what we're saying yes after the cancel of the previous one so cts equals new cancellation token source as simple as that i mean i'm going to make this so that style cop isn't shouting at me why are you still shouting at me there we go yeah, let's try this again. But this this won't we've already seen from the command line that this actually won't make a difference. But we will be able to see whether it still populates the results. Where it wasn't before. So chocolatey. Uh, let's just keep going with the example that we were trying to do, which was get version dot portable. Remember to dispose. Okay, I didn't. So there's a bunch of stuff, and then. Include pre release, then includes a bunch of stuff. So that part's still working where it wasn't before. Um, while I've got this open, Jan, I had a question. So right now we have the custom dialogue open, and right now I can't close Chocolate GUI. And I can't remember if that was intentional or not. I can minimize i can maximize but i can't close chocolate gooey do you recall if that was set deliberately or whether because i could see why it might be deliberate in the sense that if i've got a process running here which is running off and installing something i, I don't necessarily want to close it but yeah, someone mentioned it in a comment, and I thought I'd mention it while I remember it. Uh, so cts dot dispose. A dialog should be closed before being able to close a window. Normally, you can't close an application when a dialog is open. So I, I guess what it comes down to is there's been a few issues raised by a member of the community who has concerns over the blocking nature of some aspects of chocolate gooey, specifically around, for example, loading the first set of results into the chocolatey source, as an example. They feel that they want that to be a background operation where they can still run off and go to settings, go and look at things, and then come back. And um, it has um, populated the results. Um, but I don't know whether I, I don't know how far down that little rabbit hole I want to go in terms of making things working in the background but still using other parts of the UI. Open settings and try to close Visual Studio Code. You agree on that one? Which one are which one are you referring to there, Marie? Sorry, I missed the context of what it's saying when you typed that. Uh, what was I going to do? What 
was I our way to do just now? So the cancelling of the task is something that's on my list. And I think based on the work that uh, Kim has showed here, mm. got the name wrong, based on the work that Jan has done here, I think we will be able to add the cancellation of that uh, to the dialogue. So you will be able to cancel some of those operations. Some of the other operations, I don't think we necessarily want to be able to cancel them, i.e. cancelling of an installation. I don't think we want to do that. Um, so, yeah. Different discussions for a different day. What we were going to do, it was going to go and look at the this one. I'm going to say that Uh, what are we doing here? So hold on. I agree on the loading of the packages in the background. Try using Chocolate GUI when you have plus 200 packages installed from multiple sources. So that... So that's kind of fixed by the feature that we added, which was to not preload the sources. So I, or are we talking about something different there, uh, Maurice, with the 200 plus packages? Cancel on install, no, agreed. Cancel on check for updates, yes. Cancel on check for updates. I think I know what you're talking about there. But again, we can come back to that. So this is x name equals uh, include pre release checkbox margin foreground content grid is checked is enabled. Cut, paste, whoa. And put you in there. Seriously? Leave me alone. So, where's the thing that I want? The thing that I want is this thing. Copy, paste, advanced dialogue, include, pre release. Text and content. That's not going to exist, so let's go over to here and Go into here, go into here. Go to the bottom here. Include pre-release question mark. Gonna say that that is fixed. Now I have a follow up question. Uh, Kim saying, in my opinion, preventing the loading and being able to cancel a load is two different things. Most people would probably want the list to be filled automatically, but may wish the cancel was taking too long or they selected. Okay, valid, valid. Can I put a tooltip here and have it override the one on the header control? 
Let's see if that works. Okay, so I don't disagree with that. Sorry about the background noise. Just dropping stuff all over my desk. Um, so I don't disagree with that. I think that makes sense. Not Bob Bore. Well, that's too late now. It's already running. Um, what? Oh, I see why that's coming up as white now. Okay. So right, right now, cancel because I didn't want to look at this one. Cancel. Okay. So if we click on this, I'm gonna try to prove to myself. Ooh, I saw it working. Oh, Bob as well. Look. Ah, oh, look at that. Okay, cool. So let's go and get some text to have a look at here. Learn docs. Usage commands install pre release oh, include pre releases. <laughs> um, so that doesn't really help before I was trying to get out there, but also on local view when loading outdated versions of your packages. Well, you see, do we really need that though? So hold up. I don't that one because that's changed now. So hold on a second. Hold on. Let me show you something and see if you agree with this and then make sure we're on the same page. So if I do settings and I say purge outdated packages, right? And we close this down and I say run. Then what I'm going to try and show you is The oh, let's talk through it. So right now it's popul this is populating this list, and it's this thing here that's doing the checking for the outdated packages. So this is happening in the outdated in the background. That when that little grey bar at the bottom went away, that's when you got the outdated packages. So that to me is okay because that wasn't blocking anything you could run off and go to settings and do whatever you needed to at that point in time but that was in the background does that make sense i'm gonna wait for a response on that and then i'm gonna look at this from Ian. owner can close with dialog oh i see Okay. Yeah, but the, I understand what you're saying, Maurice, but but there's nothing, why would you want to cancel it? It's not stopping you from doing anything else. That task is a background process that Chocolate itself runs in the background for you. And then at the same time, installing a new package. Mm. I don't know what to say. I mean, how would you want to surface the cancellation of that task? Because right now, I, 
No. Maybe not. <laughs> um, but, okay, so that aside though, how would how would you want that background task to be cancelled? How would you want to surface that in the UI? How would you want to be able to allow someone to cancel that task? Because there's nothing, there's no UI element when that little grey progress bar at the bottom is running. I'm open to suggestions here. Uh, but in terms of what I know, I I don't I understand what you're saying, Maurice, but you're still not answering my question. So, if you have a you've got lots of outdated packages, or you've got lots of packages and you're running outdated, so this thing at the bottom is sitting there for a period of time. But how do you want to cancel it? How what UI would you want to surface to allow that operation to be cancelled? Because it's intended as a background process. It's it's it doesn't bring up one of the big UIs or the big uh, modal windows because well, it doesn't. Switch view X in the end. I'm not sure what that means. A small red X over here. I guess what it comes down to though is, I mean, there's an overarching thing here with regard to how we, I'm not sure if chocolate itself, I would need to look at the chocolate lib to see if we can cancel that task. And it would be a task for another day, absolutely. Um, so I like what Jan was saying there in terms of potentially showing or potentially allowing that to be set. So, okay, we could look into that as well. But for now, I'm going to do this and say pre-release. Tool tip, tool top, tool tip. I'm going to get there. Tool tip. And then this one goes into here. It goes into here and it says should pre release package versions be included in the. Should package should pre-release package versions should pre-release versions be included in the list of versions or selection. Sorry. Uh, okay, when I try to install package X and have an empty cache, I start chocolate GUI, switch the source, search for package X. I need to sit and wait until the outdated check is finished before it starts searching for package X in the list. Include. Include. Pre-release. <laughs> include pre-release packages in the version list. Okay, fine. When I try to install package X and have an empty cache, I start the GUI, switch to source X, search for package X. I need to sit and wait until the outdated check is finished before it starts searching for package X.
Hmm. So you know how to fix that, Maurice, right? I can tell you how to fix that. I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> what you want to do is you want to come in here and set this to be that. That'll fix the problem. Because after you install a package, it will refresh the outdated package cache. I'll fix it. Can we safely run to chocolatey man's? Same time. Chocolate outdated. It will just put the issue to bed, but not the fence. <laughs> what was this number before? I think it was sixty, wasn't it? Um, let me mull that one over. I've got a note of it. Let me mull it over. Um, so, from what we've done tonight, then, we have realized that I can't type and talk at the same time. So, we have done some refactoring. We've made it such that this is populated, or this our list sorts them descending, but there's an issue with regard to um, just in general what this is returning to us, because even that is, yeah, so that is giving us the bottom half. If we scroll all the way down, and that is giving us that one, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, they say it's not. Oh, no, because I said page one again, didn't I? When we said it was zero based. So I've got a one in there where we need a zero. Um, so we fix this in the sense that it's ordering by descending, which is what we want. We've included functionality to include pre-release, but that isn't being respected in the search for some reason. Um, we have moved, we've refactored this uh, dialogue to include, um, we've refactored the dialogue to pass the chocolate service into the dialogue to do the work. Um, and I think I'm actually going to do what Kim suggested in this other gist. So if I go over here, then in my where did you pass those settings? I'm going to grab some code here, copy bar settings, owner can close with dialogue, and then that gets passed into my show metro dialogue which is this one so as a third parameter i pass in my settings 
run that. Here's an idea. Chocolate GUI CLI feature. Enable, disable, check for background packages on start. Disable, check for, I don't think that's a bad idea. We would, so could you write that up as an issue, Maurice? Because we could certainly do that. We would need, we would need a, we would need a button somewhere though. If we don't do it on startup, we would need to enable triggering it from somewhere. So that would either be a button in the settings screen or more likely a button up here, which is to refresh packages, uh, update all, export, another button up here that is check for outdated. But that refresh is, that refresh is, those are two different things. That refresh is to refresh the list of items in this list, not for, I see that as a separate operation. The hide method to its for consistency. Oh, sorry, I missed that one. Apologies. Um, this one here. Settings. Custom dialog settings. Okay, let's run this again. or just check for outdated packages on start. Yes, so the name would be as what Kim suggested, Maurice. It would be, but no, I, 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 I think that's a good idea. I do. Because we've done that with the prevent preload of the, um, no, absolutely, I think that makes a lot of sense. So in here, I can now close this one. And I think that makes sense. Yes, okay, good, good, good. Okay, I'm going to say that I'm gonna commit all of this stuff while, uh, oh, but we did a bunch of stuff that we don't necessarily want to do for, so let's go ahead and stage these things. This one. This one, no, no, yes, 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 no, no, no. Uh, work completed on live stream. Uh, refactored, passing service into Dialog. Really? Uh, added pre release checkbox for when searching for package versions. What else do we do? We added page and page size to search. For package versions, added new resource strings for pre release checkbox. Blah, blah, blah. Allow closing of chocolatey GUI from advanced. Install dialog. Go away. Seriously. Okay, I think that was the majority of it. Oh no, we did one other thing. Uh, sort versions descending. 
from and combo box. Okay, let's commit that and push that up so that it's off of my disk here. Get push origin. Okay, so I think from a Thank you very much, Maurice. It would be nice to be able to disable the check for outdated packages on start. Change required, setting, default enabled, CLI parameter, package parameter, update button. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, thank you for adding that. Oh yeah, that's all my, that's all the, okay, I think I'm done. I think I'm done for the evening. So in terms of what we're trying to achieve or where we're trying to get to, let's go and have a little look at here. Chocolate GUI, then issues, parameters this one, then what we have spoken around is selected version should be the latest version available by default. So that we have done. I'm gonna say edit. And I'm gonna turn this into a to-do item. This one. This one. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Selected version should be the latest version available by default. That part's done when it's included in the list. In order for this to work, we need a new release of chocolate gooey lib, uh, chocolate lib, sorry. We should restrict the number of available packages perhaps by 20 in my default. So we've done that one. We're not, based on a conversation with Rob, I think allowing zero to include all of them would be bad. So I'm gonna say that we're not doing that. If a user wants to have all of them, then they can push the button that we're going to have, which will allow them to add more package versions into it. So I'm going to say, not to that. We haven't got the more button. Version should be sorted from newest to oldest. It does that in the GUI. Why does it do that? version should be sorted. See? Refresh that. Version should be sorted from the newest to oldest. Yes. Perhaps provide the ability to allow a package version to be entered. We haven't done that. Would be Good, I think that's meant to say. Auto-complete filtering of the text box. There should be a checkbox to control. So that part is implemented. It doesn't work from a chocolate point of view. We need to dig into that. Would be nice to fetch the available package version once the dialog is opened and Jan did that part. So that's coming together nicely. Um, there was a question about a issue that someone's having. Refreshing environment variables from registry for command. Please wait, the syntax of the command is incorrect. Refreshing environment variables from registry for command. Syntax of the command is incorrect.
syntax on the command. Yeah, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know. Uh, now what I've got left is, or where we're left with this, and I want to get some opinion on this, is I started writing this up. So I've got an Excel spreadsheet, love a bit of Excel, I do, that um, these are all the command arguments that you can pass to the install, upgrade, uninstall, download, and pin commands. And these ones here are obviously the uh, all the common ones between all of the commands. No, not Google Docs. I'm a Microsoft guy. Because um, what we've got just now, and then there's a bunch of, these are all the green ones here are the licensed param license options. So we're ignoring those ones just now. But what we've got is currently we've very much been writing this install dialog around the install command. So what I want to do at some point is refactor this to include the available options for the other commands, the upgrade, the uninstall, the download, etc. So, hello Stevie, how's it going? Um, I'm on a Mac, yes, that's because what, what, that's, cause that's what I got provided from work. Uh, but I'm still a Microsoft guy. I'm using Microsoft products running on a Mac. It's all good fun. Um, so what we, what I, we need to do is we need to go through this list and make sure that all of the ones that we want to include are included for the various dialogues. So what I would like to be able to do is restrict or to not have multiple dialogues but i think we might need them um i think we might need to be able to control that a little bit better so when we come into here and we look at something that's already installed then we need to be able to have the reinstall advanced and the uninstall advanced. Um, and those dialogues, I think we need them to be different dialogues because there are additional options that get passed in based on what command is being sent in. Now we either have a common dialogue that is aware of what the command is and then show and hide them based on what was passed in or we have a separate dialogue so i haven't really i haven't really decided how to do that yet i may wait for i may wait for some input from jan on that so now i can now set the clock back and make some Absolutely, yeah. And thank you very much for your time. I'm I'm away to be signing off, so I can. I appreciate your <laughs> I appreciate your time on the stream tonight. Uh, you can install Windows 10 native on your Mac. It's just an Intel processor. Oh, I absolutely could do that, but um, I'm not gonna mess with. Yeah, I don't. No, no, I'm just not gonna. If that were to avoid any sort of warranty, no. I, I know you can. I know you can boot, boot camp and all and it's supported, blah, 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 blah. But no, I'm just going to stick with what's on here and run my full-time VM, which is what this thing is, essentially. Um, so where we're at is there's some discussion around, or I need to put some thought into whether this dialogue is a separate dialogue for each command that we want to have an advanced thing on, or whether we are having one that is then knowledgeable about which ones, but that becomes complicated in terms of um, knowing the view model associated with it. Um, so yeah, haven't decided, haven't decided. <laughs> 99.9, sure, let's go with that. Um, but I really think we're making progress here. We're I, we're getting close, I think, to having something that will work. So 
I'm really quite chuffed with this, and I think I I think it'll be useful to people. I know that um, there are some at least a few people that want. There was an interesting issue that was raised with regard to. Um, there was an interesting issue that was raised off the back of this one. So if you do use the advanced installation dialog and you come along and do an upgrade of that same package, the the ability to reach into the persisted arguments that chocolatey stores and automat automatically populate them in the advanced UI was surfaced. I like the idea. I see it as a separate thing to yeah, pre-fill the dialogue, Kim. I see that as a separate discussion. So I, I see that as a, an enhancement on this enhancement, which is why I've raised it as a separate issue. Um, but yeah, basically, if you pass in, uh, if you pass in options to the install command, they get persisted by Chocolatey, and then when you come along and you upgrade through the UI, it surfaces those and sets them automatically uh, in the UI. I like it. I don't know how we visualize that in terms of knowing that these have been set already. Maybe just the fact that they are set is enough, but whether we might need to bring it up to say that, like a warning to say that we've surfaced these from the persisted arguments, it's a different discussion. So we wouldn't. Um, uh, Maurice, we wouldn't, well, not in the, not in Chocolate GUI open source anyway. Um, we, because Chocolate GUI open source doesn't know about them anyway. Um, but we may want to handle that in the uh, Chocolate GUI extension where we could, we can and do surface those. But that's a, that's a discussion for another day. What I'm talking about in this issue is literally just the parameters available to chocolate gooey open source. Whether we do something different elsewhere, that's that's a different story. I think we can, but not today. Not today. But anyway, that's me done, I think, for just now. I uh, appreciate you all coming along and spending some time with me. Uh, I hope the stream... <coughs> It's working okay. I know that a couple of folks said that um, there was some issues uh, with it freezing, but I think we've kind of we haven't heard any more of those. Uh, absolutely, uh, Jan, you, you too. Appreciate your help as always. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, what? Oh, don't know what to say, Maurice. Uh, so this question there from Stevie is re is use remembered argument still considered experimental? Uh, I think so. Use remembered arguments available. This is considered in preview for will be flipped on by default. So yes, it is. It's still considered as. Technically, it's still considered as a preview. Yes. It's healthy. And send me a mail or do a DM if you have questions. Thank you very much, Jan. I will. I certainly will. Uh, I thought it was. Yeah, still preview, but works. But yeah. So it, it does. I mean, there's... What we'll need to do is we will need to reach into where Chocolatey stores those things as part of the installation. So basically this file here, but obviously that's going to have its own problems in the sense that we need to decrypt it. So we're going to need to bring those out. Um, but that brings out another... I've just thought of that. Hold on. Hmm. Issues. I'm going to add an issue here for provide ability to see persisted 
arguments for installed package. Is that kind of the same thing? This is similar to copy this issue, but would allow only viewing of the arguments that were used and not in the context of doing an upgrade. Well, it's it's kind of the same, but I mean, I wouldn't necessarily want to have to go to the upgrade dialog. I might just want to see them, or I might want to export them somewhere in non-encrypted format. So ways and means, because um, right now there's not really a, a good way to surface that. So then what's, you can connect that with the issue. What's that one? Show remember arguments for packages. Oh. That would be good. Um, I'm going to grab this, perhaps related to this issue. Show sure remember argument for packages. That's an old one. I should probably just get around to doing that at some point. Mm. But that, hmm, that includes, just reading the last couple of comments there, that kind of includes altering the arguments that were passed in so that they're remember for the next one. That's mm. So there's lots of conversations around that, but I, I want to capture that just for um, future. But that, that, like I say, that's me coming to the end for now. Um, still work to be done here, but we're getting close, I think, getting close to having something that's ready for testing. Um, so I'll keep you posted on how that's going. I think this chocolate gooey will probably be the the meat of at least another couple of streams and then we'll need to switch over to something else. So um, we did a big chunk of stuff on Git Release Manager. Uh, we're doing a big chunk of stuff here on Chocolate GUI. We may want to pick one of the other projects that I have uh, in the backlog and um, spend some time doing some work on those. So, right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Uh, stay safe. Remember social distance and uh, we shall see you next Monday, if not before. All right. Bye bye.